Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Mostly Photo is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Mostly Photo with Lisa Bentley and Leo Laporte. Episode 4, recorded April 12th, 2011, live from NAB. Mostly Photo is brought to you by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash mostlyphoto. And by Ford and the 100% reinvented 2011 Ford Explorer. With its thoughtful design, room for seven passengers, impressive cargo space, best-in-class V6 highway fuel economy, and available sync with my Ford Touch, the 2011 Ford Explorer is perfect for your adventures with the family. For more information and to submit your photos for the Mostly Photo Adventure Awards, visit MostlyPhotoAdventures.com. Welcome to Mostly Photo. We're here in uh, Vegas. Look at this. At the National Association of Broadcasters show in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're here all week, and what better place to take Lisa Betney for a Mostly Photo. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Mostly Lisa's here. Uh, we had a great photo walk yesterday, we walking did. around the fountains. We did. We had a lot of enthusiastic people. It and was so neat. It was really great. We had so many diff different cameras. We had a guy using his iPad. We that was funny. A guy using a Polar Polaroid camera. Yeah, he had an SX-70. Wow. Very cool. So we had... An amazing walk. So we've got video of that and uh, photos from that next week. We want to give people a chance to upload their photos uh, to the Mostly Photo site on Flickr. In fact, you want to know about that site because we're going to tell you in a little bit how you can win some money there. Mostly Photo exactly. is a Flickr group. Share That's, your photos. Yes. That's I'm always a good you. thing to do. Share. Share. Definitely. Share and share alike. Uh, so you, your mom was here. That was my cute. mom was here. Yeah. yeah. Did you go to any shows or do anything? We did. We saw Le Rêve at the Win. It was very spectacular. Although I did get in trouble for trying to take pictures. Always. <laughs> you always get in trouble. <laughs> that's that's part of the I deal. I got really told off. I, I, they said at the beginning, no photograph, no flash photography. So I thought I'd that be okay. That sounds like you could do regular photography. But. Uh, Two minutes in, I, I got in big trouble. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> you know what it is? It's that big professional camera. If you were using a cheap little point and shoot or your camera phone, I bet you lots of people were doing that. It's the it's the it's the five D. I know. I'm not sure why they didn't. Whether it was that because it, it's not going to distract the performers to have a camera that doesn't have a flash. Well, were you in the front row? I was very close oh. to it, but I was so excited because there were people dropped acrobats oh, know, and people so cool. dropping from the ceiling and dancers and. Uh, to me, experiencing a show isn't as fun as taking pictures of a show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we know you're a photographer for sure. You would rather take a picture than, than live. I would a little bit. My yeah. family's that way. They say, why? Just get out from behind the lens and enjoy it. And I say, but you're going to thank me in 10 years when we have pictures exactly. of this event. I had a very, we're going to get your tips in a little bit. This is, we are going to cover a little bit of NAB. Uh, we've got a great guest coming up in a, a little bit, Mitch uh, Ogner, Onger. Onger. Sure. Onger. <laughs> Thank you. Mitch Onger is here. He's from... Um, Planet uh, 5D. Which is a great 5D uh, fan site. And he's a great photographer, too. So we'll, that'll be fun. He'll show us some stuff. Um, we've got your tips coming up. We've got uh, an, a big announcement to make and lots more. Uh, but I thought, uh, you know, before any of the good stuff, I would share an insight that I had. Share your insight. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I told you about the good stuff is so that you can get through this part. Okay. No, I was, I, I, this is kind of interesting by itself. I found an old camcorder mm -hmm. in a, that was shoved in a drawer and it had a tape in it. Now, I've, I've misplaced all the tapes from the kids growing up. I know they're somewhere and I've got to find them. But it was like gold. I thought, there's a tape in here. I don't mm -hmm. know what it's from. So I, I charged up the battery. I found the battery charger. It only holds a charge for about five minutes. So I, I had to charge mm -hmm. it. And I've got a cable. And I imported an iMovie. And it was, lo and behold, uh, f pictures from a family vacation we took in 2005. Wow. So the kids were little. It was really great. I mean, th I was like, oh, I'm so glad I shot this. And at every point in this, by the way, mm -hmm. my son, my wife, my daughter are going, don't take it. Dad, stop taking pictures. And, and so I was surreptitiously shooting the video. But, but I'm glad I did now, yeah. right? Because I have those pictures. And the, but the insight I got was not merely that you should ignore your family and friends, <laughs> which is one insight. The other one was um, 
we were in Paris, and I took a lot of pictures of the Eiffel Tower and Notre Dame. And every once in a while, the camera would wander over and show my son five years ago, or six years ago, mm -hmm. my daughter six years ago. I realize now, I wish I hadn't taken those pictures. The Eiffel Tower looks exactly the same. Notre Dame looks exactly the same. What I should have been taking pictures of was my kids, the stuff that's mm -hmm. going to change. I think capturing memories. Yep. That's what's important. And I get a lot of people who are really concerned about taking the best pictures and getting really worried about you know, what camera they have. And they forget that the whole point in taking pictures is to capture these moments. Yep. And if, if you're so bothered about what you've got rather than the actual taking of a picture, because sometimes snapping an iPhone photo of a moment is, is, is sometimes better than... Well, and more than that, I was being artsy. <laughs> you know, oh, I'm going to have the great shot of the gargoyle looking out over Paris. With, and I can see that any time. I can go back to Paris today, and it looks exactly the same. It will for 500 more years, mm -hmm. but those kids will never look the same. Mm -hmm. And I was watching that video, and at every moment thinking, point the camera over there. Point the camera. I want to see what, what's Henry doing right now. How's he reacting mm -hmm. to Paris? So I learned a very valuable lesson looking at that old tape, which, which is, and it's so tempting to be the artist, the artiste. When we were doing the photo walk yesterday, the yeah. temptation is take pictures of the beautiful Vegas lights and stuff. And sure, there are some great pictures there. Mm -hmm. But I ended up taking a lot more pictures of the photographers and the people. I love taking pictures of photographers. Isn't it? <laughs> it's much better. Yeah. And those are the things that, that are going to change. The landscape won't change so much. But those photographers and the people mm -hmm. and the way they're dressed and the way they react and the way they look, that's, that's priceless. So that was a great lesson for me to mm -hmm. remember that. You know, That's my tip of the week. Tip of the week. Now it's your turn for your tips of the week. So I, I get a lot of questions asking me, how do I, I take these pictures and they just kind of look like snapshots. How do I turn right. them into great pictures? And I think the most important thing is just time. Spending the time to pre-visualize your shots, find the best locations for your shots, composing your shots. Yesterday when we were at the fountain, a lot of people... No, we had 15 minutes to take, because that's how long the show would take. The, uh, the Bellagio, the Bellagio fountains. fountains are amazing. And people would set up, and, and they wouldn't quite get the shot, and they'd sort of be discouraged, and they wouldn't keep taking shots. Right. And I think for a lot of people, knowing that it takes a lot longer than you think to get that perfect shot. So my first tip is to pre-visualize your shots. And we've mentioned this a little bit before, but one thing that I do when I'm in a location such as Vegas or my recent trips to Europe, I always go on Flickr or Google and I do an image search of that place. Oh, interesting. So I'll go and kind of know what you're going to see ahead of time. Yeah, so I'll, I'll type in Las Vegas on Flickr and I'll turn on the interesting button. <laughs> oh, there's an interesting button? Yeah, you can sort so you can of say I only want to see the stuff that people liked a lot. Exactly, uh, the stuff that's been explored, the stuff that's really exciting. And through that, you find sort of the best shots that photographers are taking in that place. You also find out the the obvious shots so that you exactly. don't do them again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So you find these are the locations and Flickr has GPS locations. So you can find I, I saw a really incredible photo that sort of had New York, New York, the hotel, and it had the traffic, but I couldn't figure out where it was taken from, and it showed on the GPS exactly what street, what location it was taken from. So that's a really useful tool. And you can also find the local photographers, so people who live in Vegas who right. shoot where all the they time. Take pictures where of? do they take pictures? Yeah. Where are the interesting spots? Because sometimes you you're walking down the street and you have the tendency to just take a picture. Oh, there's the I, I you know fake Eiffel Tower, and you don't look around the corner. What's right. around the corner? There might right. be something really cool, and there's so much going on. So to plan those locations, and actually when I was in London, I really used these tools. So I knew what time of day I wanted to shoot, because in London they have, there's sort of a blue hour. Oh, interesting. That happens after magic hour, but before it turns dark. So I knew that because I found this photographer that said, oh, I love to shoot during blue hour. So I went out during that time, and I also knew I wanted to shoot Westminster Abbey, but at a certain time of day, and I actually plotted out the spots that I wanted to go shoot. You got great shots too. I love I them. I did, and I, I, 
And that brings me into the second tip, which is don't give up until you get the shot that you want. Oh, man, I know this. You know, because I, I, when I went around with professional photographers, if the times I've gone around with the pros, they have such patience. Me, I get, I see the picture, I go, just as, just as you said, there's the Eiffel Tower, click, and I'm done, <laughs> and I walk on. They will wait for the light. They'll wait for something good to happen. They're very patient. I was talking to Trey about this, actually, and he said that he goes until he can't go anymore, until his legs give out. And that's when he stops for the night. <laughs> uh. And really, when I was in London, I would go out for four to six hours, wow. just shooting and making sure I got the shot. And I'd come to a place, and I was at Westminster Abbey, and I took a, a photo, but there were lots of people. It was during the day. The light wasn't good. And so I made sure that I came back later on to get the shot that I wanted. And I want to tell everyone that for every amazing picture that you see, there are a hundred bad ones. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to go through those bad ones to get to the great shot. That's so true. Even that's discouraging sometimes for an amateur like me. When I see the bad shots, I just <laughs> say, I give up. But don't I, give up. Don't give up. I, I always, my mom's sort of getting into digital photography, and I see her shots, and she, oh, I didn't quite get it. I don't know. It's not. It's not great. And I well, just stay. Stay with it. Yeah. Stay with it. You know, you. That's can something get, we can do with digital photography because we can see that shot right away. Exactly. You can see it, and you can move. Sh taking a shot of the Bellagio fountains, maybe it's not great. It's dead straight on where we were. So maybe it's about exploring different places, different angles, trying different lenses. It's all about putting the time and the effort. And, and my third tip is we haven't really talked about post-processing a lot in the show, and that's something I really want to get into. Well, you and Trey are both big post-processors. Yes. I, I will admit to tweaking almost everything. Right. I, in Photoshop or Lightroom or exactly. some Exactly. If there's yeah. something I don't like in a photo, whether it's a person, a garbage can. You'll take it out? I'll take it out. I, <laughs> even there's nothing on, wrong with that. Even on buildings. This isn't the, photojournalism. Exactly. If there's a mess, messy concrete, there's garbage, I'll, I'll take it all out. And I think that that's the difference once you get into really perfecting your shots. So if you, if you want to turn a snapshot into something that you can frame and put on your wall, mm. then you really need to get into, into post-processing. Spending some time with it. And I'd love to, and I've, get, I've gotten a lot of uh, feedback about this, so I really want to cover Lightroom and Aperture and, and, and getting people who aren't necessarily using these tools to get familiar. Because when I started, I didn't know anything. Right. I, didn't, I didn't know how to use these well, tools we should either. do some shows. I, I, I have some friends who are Lightroom experts we could get on, including exactly. some of the uh, authors of Lightroom. And it's, it's intimidating when you first open up Photoshop. It's, what are all these tools? How do I do right. this? But I, I learned all from, you know, internet, lynda.com. I actually, that was one of the it's first. great source. First tools. And there were, there were free. I mean, you could pay for it, but, but I. I L-Y-N-D-A. Lynda.com. And there was a great tutorial on how to retouch uh, sort of skin and for model shots, and that was one of the first things that I learned, just how to clone, how to brush stuff out. and Very so, valuable. Exactly. You know, if you take all three of your tips it, and look at a common thread, it's taking time. Taking time to think about the shot ahead mm -hmm. of time. Taking time to get the shot, maybe taking more pictures than you thought. And then finally taking the time afterwards to make sure that shot pops. Exactly, exactly. See, seeing it through, if you're really passionate about photography and getting these amazing pictures, you're going to have to put the time and effort into yeah. it. And especially if you're shooting people. And like you said with your kids, kids don't always want their picture taken. No, people do boy, not want their picture they taken. Really and they will complain and whine about it. And you just have to be persistent and really, <laughs> and really know what you're after. If you want a, pic a great picture of your kid, you're going to have to really push for that photo and, and try to make it fun for them and get them involved. And I never did manage to do that. <laughs> they, yeah, it Lollipops. only got worse. <laughs> it's got to the point now I go to my uh, son's lacrosse games. And, you know, I have a big, long lens with an extender. I, I love that, you know, the 7200, and I have a 1.5 oh, extender nice. so I can get a nice, long shot. Uh, but I, and, I, and I bring a monopod. I look like a sports photographer or a <laughs> nut and he won't let me stand on the sidelines where I could get a great shot he says y you can use that but you better sit in the stands with everybody else he just is embarrassed by me I think 
Yes. So you're saying I should just forget it and just keep going? Well, honestly, <laughs> if you want that shot, you've, you've got to push for it. And something I really regret from my figure skating days is after I finished skating, I never wanted my picture taken. Right. And I'd be in my full costume. Well, and that's I'd, when you look great. And I never let my mom take a picture. I just Because I'd either be, if I, if I did well. I, yeah, if tense. Yeah, I, if I fell or I did something poorly, yeah. I wouldn't want to get that picture. And, and so as a result, I have hardly any pictures from my figure skating days. And it's something I really regret. And if you do have kids involved in sports or dance or something like that, take the time to grab those shots. Maybe get them dressed up in their outfit uh, on a different day and, and do like a little That's photo a shoot. And, and, and they do that. At wedding photographers do that sometimes. They'll get the, oh, the exactly. couple ahead of time. Exactly. Because I've done, as a, <laughs> I've done a wedding on the day of. where I've done portraits yeah. on the day of. They don't want to And they did that. not really turn out that well no. because I didn't have, have the time. <laughs> Perfect face for radio in our chat room has a great wedding story talking about editing things out of pictures. Some photographers kind of have a, I'm not going to take anything out. It's the pictures of what happened, and I'm going to make. But you know what? All pictures are choices in art, and it's all, we're, we're creating, we're talking about creating art here. Exactly. He says, I took my camera to a friend's wedding. Their hired photographer refused to edit out the porta potties visible in <laughs> a few of the shots. He said, oh so he took the pictures, did it without asking, sent a few uh, to the photographer. The photographer sent him a bottle of rum as a thank you. He said, oh, that is better. Of or maybe course maybe it's it was better. the couple that did that. Yeah, you don't want a porta potty in your wedding shot. No, stuff like that, stuff people, especially when you're on vacation, there's always someone lurking in the background, <laughs> just, just the creeping, photo bomber. photobombing yeah. into your shot. Yep. And I, I just get rid of all that stuff. But especially if you're taking a, a beautiful photo of a building and there's just debris on the trash. ground, yeah. trash, get rid of that. And that's something that I didn't really have an eye for before. But when I started to do model shots and I'd have my you know, models sort of in in these locations you just something like that will just distract you a piece of trash on the ground or some leery person <laughs> peeking out just cut that out you use a heel brush <laughs> just heal that away yeah clone it <laughs> get clone rid it of it <laughs> strike it rich says though it is not okay to edit your ex-spouse out of the photo <laughs> <laughs> there are a number of people on facebook we we know who you are <laughs> Oh, uh, those are gr those are great tips. I'm going to add one that uh, helped me a lot when I, because you know, it's the difference between a real photo and a snapshot. And it was one somebody told me once very early on when I started taking pictures. He said, "Get closer than you think." A lot of people okay. who take snapshots. It's of everything. It's a big picture. Sometimes you want to tell the, the the looker, the reader, whatever you call the person looking at your photo, what to look at, and you do it by mm -hmm. getting in closer than you it's think. Especially with candid shots. Yeah. If you can get a really really tight shots of faces. So those, those, are the, those are the best shots. Yep. That's what we like. <laughs> We're talking about photos. We're at the National Association of Broadcast, uh, Broadcasters Convention, the NAB mm -hmm. show. And uh, since we're here, I think it might be a good idea to talk a little bit about what we're seeing. There's some really interesting stuff, even for uh, still photographers. Uh, Mitch Onger, did I say it right? He's yes. going to join us in a little bit. <laughs> and uh, he's bringing some uh, gadgets from the show floor. Um, we also have uh, some... Um, uh, questions from our audience we're going to answer in just a little bit. Before we do that, though, it's time for me to tell you about Audible.com, the show brought to you by Audible. Do you, do you listen to audiobooks? I don't. we got to get you going But I this. want to. You should. Because I have a very low attention span now, and I feel <laughs> like if I picked up a book, if it didn't move or right. do something, right. <laughs> I, would be, I wouldn't be able to do it. Right. So I would love to have something that I can listen to because I travel so much. It's great if you spend time on a plane. It's it, First of all, you got to have really good headphones on a plane because there's a baby crying. <laughs> I don't even mind the baby so much. It's the people behind me with the most boring conversation. <laughs> and I, or I'm listening to the guy try to pick up the girl next to him and, he does, and she doesn't want, and I don't want to hear that. <laughs> so while you put on the headphones, you got a great book. That's how, when I flew down here, I was sad the flight was over. I was just getting the good, the good part. Well, so. can you can you recommend something I for can. me? I would like something thrilling, maybe mystery oh. or something, some a spy thriller. That's oh. what I would like. There's a lot of good spy thrillers at Audible.com. Uh, if you like the Alex Cross mysteries, they're fantastic. Of course, there's the classics. There's Agatha Christie and uh, P.D. James. You like P.D. James mysteries? She's the best. She, you never <laughs> read any P.D. James? Oh, I'm going to recommend like. <laughs> 
Murder in the Cathedral. There's some. Oh, that's Agatha Christie. But there's some great P.D. James books. I'm gonna. I can put a, a little list together for okay. you. We'll get you that Audible account. I, I'd like to do that because I find when I'm traveling, it's it's not even being on the plane, but it's all the waiting around and exactly. all that stuff. I don't care anymore. I got a book. <laughs> I got a great book. Uh, let me actually recommend a book that I think our audience might be a little bit interested in. It's a brand new book. Stephen Levy's been writing this for the last couple of years, all about Google. Oh, very interesting. Yeah, and I just started reading it, and boy, or I, I always say reading, because it's reading, but I'm listening. Uh, and I just, I'm loving it, because he started in 2007. He's got great stories about how Google uh, got started. He's, he's got interviews with the, everybody at Google, including Marissa Meyer, who said, if you want to understand Google, there's only one thing you need to know. The founders, Larry and Sergey, were Montessori kids. They went to Montessori school, and that's how the whole company is built some right. real insights this is a fun that's book. that's very cool yeah i really love stephen levy he's a guy who wrote hackers and many other classics uh you can get this book on audible.com it's called inside the plex do they have the facebook book as well they do act they have a couple of them they have accidental billionaires which is the one the movie was based exactly, on yeah highly recommended it's trashy <laughs> I love it. I like, it's a I little wish gossipy. there was more trash in that movie. <laughs> yeah, no, there's more trash in the book. It's trashy. Uh, and I don't know, and there's some question about how accurate it is. And then there's the other one that was written by, the, kind of with the approval of Mark Zuckerberg. They have that as well. So if you're interested in the tech industry, you certainly mm -hmm. can get a lot of reading done that way. I like to, what I do is I do a nonfiction, then a fiction, right, nonfiction, exactly. then a fiction, sometimes at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, i tell you what, I, you know, when you're busy, as you are, as I know most of our listeners are, um, sometimes it's hard to get reading done, but Audible makes it possible. Whether you're in the car, in the plane, and just even doing the dishes at home, I live on Audible books, and you I know you dishes? will too. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Doesn't Pete? No. Okay. <laughs> just saying. I do the dishes, baby. Wow. <laughs> there's a there's a pickup line. Hey, by the way, uh, I do the dishes and I make the bed, and you know what? The seat is always down. <laughs> Audible.com. Sorry, dear. Audible.com <laughs> slash Mostly Photo. Get your first book free. That means you're signing up for the gold account. That's a month, a book a month. And, uh, and you can cancel it any time, but the book you uh, choose, that's the hard part, is what book should you choose is yours to keep forever. I would say Into the Plex or Inside the Plex, In the Plex is just fantastic from Stephen Levy. But you get your choice, 70,000. Audible, I'm sorry, thank you. Audible Podcast. They changed the URL on me. I'm sorry. Audiblepodcast.com slash Mostly Photo. Make sure you go there so Lisa gets credit audiblepodcast.com slash mostly photo and guys she's looking for somebody who washes the dishes <laughs> it's a little tip <laughs> i'm just teasing i'm a, just a teasing so we got some questions i okay. love this now is our email address working you're asking, it is i'm asking mo you mostly photo at, at twit dot dot tv good good so if you have a question for lisa you can also twitter her at can, mostly lisa if your question's short <laughs> yeah if you can get in 140 characters or thereabouts at Mostly Lisa or uh, Mostly Photo. Mostly Photo at, at Twitter. Twitter. So, so give us a question. Hello, my name is Dustin, and I have a question for my wife. She shoots weddings and family portraits, but has a hard time staying busy. She will get a few jobs once a month, then go the next two or three weeks without any work. She advertises through Facebook, Twitter, her blog, and word of mouth. Huh. Can, I, can having a real web page in place of a blog improve the look of her business and affect the amount of work? That's an interesting question. It is. And it's something that I've played around with. I obviously have my blog, which has sort of evolved more into a photography blog. And then I also have a portfolio site, lisabetany.com, which I keep sort of... Oh, it's, it's separated a it's little bit. It's more, for more business, so you'll give that out to people, pr prospective clients. It like is. Yeah. But I have to say that through my own experience, I get a lot more attention through my blog than I do my portfolio site because my portfolio site isn't really active. There's nothing really happening. There's not a lot of personality. Right. It's, it's great to show prospective clients a portfolio site that has only your very, very best work. And if you do something like that, I recommend choosing only 20 shots, like your very, very, very best shot, and have everyone you know critique and analyze your work. And I think if you can do something like that, if you're, if you're struggling for work, then a blog is something that you can update regularly and really get a lot of shots out. And I know a lot of really successful wedding photographers 
that advertise almost solely through their blog. Yeah. You certainly should do both. It's not hard to do both. Um, I found out about you through your blog. Exactly. MostlyLisa.com. Exactly. You wouldn't be here if you didn't have that blog. Now, that was years ago, <laughs> but, but still, that blog is, is the place you exist on the net. You should have that, and it needs to be your personality. It can't just be a bland business site. Exactly, and a lot of wedding photographers will use a blog to post very regular updates. Right. And, and that's something that obviously I've fallen off the horse. <laughs> is it falling off the horse wagon? Depends what you're on. <laughs> Well, I've definitely fallen off of it because I don't update regularly because I'm so busy. But if you really want to get work, then posting regular updates. So every time, even if you just go out for a walk in the park, posting those pictures and keeping it, keeping the flow. Because when you look at somebody's blog, you just kind of scan all the photos. And it's, it's the fact that you realize this person is very active in their photography and they're constantly posting. I think that there's a balance. Definitely having a portfolio site will make you seem a little bit more professional. And if you're able to do, there are a lot of free portfolio sites that you can use that won't cost you money. Because mine is, I think it's $20 a month and I pay and, it, and it's hosted and uh, it's QU Photo, I think, with an That's F. the company that does it? Yeah. Okay. And, and I just... It's really easy back they end. I don't, I don't have to do anything. Yeah. But honestly, I really haven't gotten a lot of work through that. It's mainly through my blog and yeah. through my Twitter. And I think that if... if what about Facebook? Facebook is a great place to recruit family and friends. And especially if you're a wedding photographer, it's a great place to put your wedding photos. Right. And for everyone... You t you know, once you tag a person, everyone in their feed will see that. And I think that doing that on a regular basis, and something that Trey does that's amazing is he puts, uh, he calls it eye candy for my Facebook friends. I love that. And he just posts an amazing photo every yeah. day on Facebook. Right. And he gets, you know, hundreds of comments. And, and it really, not only for his friends, but once somebody comments on, on, on a Facebook photo, it goes into their feed. So I think regularly putting your photos on Facebook, whether you have a personal page and a fan page, definitely having a fan page is, is sort of a must for a photographer. It's free. It just You just have to... So do, do it all. Do it all, but it's about continually putting stuff out there. In those weeks where your wife isn't getting work, that's a great opportunity to go and to take portfolio shots, right. hiring models especially for wedding stuff getting those perfect uh, portrait shots in your portfolio is really going to help you're fairly obsessive when you do something you throw <laughs> your snow i know this about you, you throw yourself <laughs> into it but that works because you put all your energies into it and, and it really does work it so does this isn't just for photographers this is for anybody mm -hmm. uh, use these new tools you certainly need to have your own site because facebook can always take you down at any time so you always have to have your own site mm -hmm. yeah, i think i like the idea of having kind of a more personal blog and then a more professional portfolio site. It's easy to create the portfolio site. You're putting all the work into the blog. You just copy the relevant yeah, things. Yeah, and, and the really site. for a portfolio, it should be a really pared down. I see a lot of photographers that have Simple. seriously ten different categories: no, nature, no. You're not pets, look at them all. my family. Yeah. No, just have your twenty best shots. Yep. For me, I just if they don't want to hire you after twenty after ten. Forget it. It's not going to get any better. And it should just be your very best work and, and yeah. make sure when I was doing my portfolio, I sent it out to everyone I knew and asked them what shots should go. And it's really hard to get rid of personal shots, especially if they're of people you care about. <laughs> it's so difficult to do that. But once I love my cats, it, but no one else get, does. Yeah, exactly. Get rid of those shots <laughs> and just pare them down. And it, it will make you look more like a professional if you... If you know that you want to do wedding work, then your portfolio should just be your wedding photos. There should not be, no, there shouldn't be cats. There shouldn't be, um, <laughs> Unless you're a cat photographer. Foliage or Is there flowers. a job, cat photographer? No. <laughs> pet, I'm sure that there's a market pet for photographer. pet photography. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> uh, and I, I do think it's a little bit extra work, but the, having the Flash fan page, uh, not Flash, Facebook fan page and the uh, Twitter account, 
those you don't have to do, but they sh but they sure help with marketing. If, it's not a bad you, thing to do. If you're not into the whole talking about me, right. me, me on Facebook and Twitter, use it as a place to Teaching. share. Teaching. Share out your photos yeah. and go. My best advice for Twitter and photography is go and follow any photographer. Right. Because if they follow you back, then it starts. You start getting this community, and they'll look at your shots, and and maybe they'll retweet their shots to their. It is a community. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, you, as 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 you pointed out, but it, w look at what Lisa does, <clears throat> and look at what Trey Ratcliffe does. They're both excellent at using the internet to market themselves. Trey puts one great picture a day up on his uh, StuckInCustoms.com mm -hmm. site. Puts uh, I don't know how often he does a Facebook. Facebook candy for my friends, but once in a while, mm -hmm. maybe every day, and it's just great. And it, those those are two things that he takes religiously as an important thing for him to do, and exactly. it works. Keeping it, it up, works. keeping <laughs> stuff active, and when you're in those lulls, taking those that opportunity to really beef yeah. up your portfolio and go after jobs. N yeah, one more question we can get to before we uh, move I'm worried to about Mitch. time at this yeah, moment. Yeah, well, no, we're all right. Go, one more. Okay. I'm a freshman and I go to Albertville High School. I've been really interested in photography since the last year and I plan on making it a career when I get older. I was wondering if you could give me any pointers or tips on how to get where you are and what it takes to be a professional photographer. And this oh is from boy. Madison Sewell. I love it. She's, she's a freshman in high, high school. These are, the, these are my favorite emails yeah, because I feel like these are the people, when you're a teenager, you have lots of time. <laughs> So you have the opportunity to learn as much as possible and to experience as much as you can. Right. And I see so many amazing young photographers on Flickr that really experiment creatively with their work. They, get, they go out and get a $10 Lomo camera and go shoot off a bunch of pictures with their Now's friends. The time. So I think for this... I got three words. Take lots forwards <laughs> take lots of pictures exactly it's the way that I learned when I started I didn't take any classes I learned everything I did sort of by doing and if you have the time <laughs> to do that now's the time now's the time I was fortunate to have a period of sort of a year where I could could go out and just take photos and if you look at my first photos they're nothing special but I experimented a lot and I think we have the, an amazing opportunity now with the internet to to look at people's photos there's Flickr there's Tumblr chance, yeah. there's Facebook you see all these amazing photos and I guess if you are looking at getting into more fashion and portrait photography one of the pieces of advice I could give is to find someone that you can really that really inspires you so for me that was Annie Leibovitz it's a she good is, choice <laughs> so she is amazing and I would look at her work and I would try to figure out how is this stuff lit what camera she's shooting with and I'd go on the internet and I'd figure out what kind of gear that does she use and what kind of you know and there's so much right there's so much information out there that you can learn these things not by taking an expensive class but just by doing and by learning and getting critiques online I've got a suggestion for you an excuse to take more photos our <laughs> mostly photo adventure awards I'm excited about this we wanted to do this uh, when we first started talking about the show because we it, assignments are so much fun mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to get you out there taking pictures and we're asking you to submit your best photos every week to our group on Flickr, F-L-I-C-K-R dot com, no E. Uh, just if you're not already a member, you can go as for free. If you have a Yahoo account, you have a, mm -hmm. a Flickr account. Uh, go there, and you'll see at the top there's a list, uh, there's a, a menu item called Groups. Pull that down and search for the Mostly Photo Group. All one word, not plural, Mostly Photo Group. Join the group. It's free. Mm -hmm. Um, and submit your photos. Take your best photos and put them up there. Don't put your cat pictures up there unless they're really good. <laughs> you could get some good Watch. cat pictures. <laughs> Next week we will pick a cat picture. Watch. Uh, each week we select three photo nominees, and then we're going to give our audience a chance to vote on them on Twitter. So our first picks will be next week. Mm -hmm. So quickly get your pictures up to Flickr. Uh, put them in the Mostly Photo group. 
Uh, you don't need to tag them in any particular way. We'll just look at all the pictures in the Mostly Photo Group that were uploaded in the next seven days, and we'll pick three of them. Two awards will be given each week. There's a People's Choice Award for the photo getting the most positive tweets, and then a judge's panel. Oh, who's the judges? You, me, and uh, Trey, and whoever else we can <laughs> rope into this. Each of you will receive a, uh, besides fame and fortune on the show, a $100 Amazon gift certificate. So do put your $100 Amazon gift certificate. Put There's so many things I could buy with that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a start. Uh, see more details and the official rules on the website, mostlyphotoadventures.com. And we thank Ford and the 100% reinvented 2011 Ford Explorer for bringing us the Mostly Photo Adventure Awards. Mostlyphotoadventures.com. While you're there, you can sign up for our next photo walk, which is coming up soon. Very soon. Um, the 23rd of April, mm -hmm. which is about a few, no, a little more than a week from now. It's a Saturday. We want families to come to this one, so we decided to do a Saturday afternoon, 4 p.m. in New York City. You're going to the East Coast for this one. I am, yes. That's going to be fun. So we've done Vegas, we've done SF, so it's time to, to hit the big times. The Big Apple. <laughs> You can make it there. You can make it anywhere, or something. <laughs> uh, we're gonna do. You're gonna start at the uh, Fifth Avenue Apple, Apple store. store. There's a nice big plaza there. It's a great by itself. A great thing to take pictures of. It is. But you'll have Central Park, Columbus Circle. There's lots around there. Mm -hmm. We'll go down Fifth Avenue. I'm not gonna be there. I can't be there. But you will be doing it the 23rd, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, at the Apple Store on Fifth Avenue. Please stop by. We had about 50 or 60 people yesterday, and it was so much fun. It is fun. It's Love great it. to see people talking about photography and meeting other people and getting excited about taking photos. And we'll have the new 2011 Ford Explorer there, so you can take a look at that and take photos of that as well. We have, uh, that's just a beautiful uh, car. We had a lot of fun last night. We were shooting photos. I said, $100 to the best picture of a Ford Explorer. So we'll see what we get <laughs> on the Mostly Photos site. Uh, shall we bring in uh, our guest? Yes. I think it would be a good time to get Mitch up here. Uh, Mitch Ogden is a, uh, an evangelist for DSLRs. And, in fact, is the creator of PlanetF5D.com. Uh, in fact, he's Planet Mitch on PlanetF5D.com. I don't think anybody has to uh, ask what the 5D is in 5D.com. You're talking about the Canon 5D Mark II. Let's get uh, Mitch's mic on if we can. We're going to punch you up. There we go. Test? Yeah. Yay. So, so um, everybody asks you this. Yes. When are we going to have the Mark III? <laughs> well, you know, I do have a direct line to Canon, and they have told me all of the details, but you'll just have to read Planet 5D to find out. It's due, right? I mean, it's been a couple of years. It's, it's about time. I thought I was disappointed when it didn't come out at CES. Right. So. PMA is coming up in June. I think that's when it's going to come out. Or is well, it September? No, it's September. September is oh. most likely. Yeah. Um, they're on a three-year cycle with the 5Ds, and they did the 5D Mark II. On September 18th, I think it was, of 2007, 2008, 2008. And so, so we're due. September right. 2011 would be the right time right. to do it. Yeah. Do you have any ideas what might be in there? Bigger <laughs> sensor? Lots of rumors about a bigger sensor for stills. Uh, the, they know. had more megapixels last time. Right. You're kind of at the limit of how many megapixels you wanted to pack on that 35 millimeter sensor. You know, at the Canon Expo last fall, they showed a, a, a crop chip, you know, the, like it's in the 7D, that was 120 megapixels in a crop chip. So they can get there. I know they can do it. Right. It's pretty amazing. I mean, I was, <laughs> when, I, when I went to the show, I, you know, they were talking about this 120 megabyte or megapixel chip, That's and I was crazy. expecting it to be, you know, right. massive. And it was little APS-C size. So. Wow. No 3D. Just tell me no 3D. That's no, all. No 3D. <laughs> no. <laughs> so um, we thought we'd bring you uh, up here to talk about the uh, NAB show. And there's a lot of pro stuff at NAB. A lot of is pro there, stuff. Is there still camera stuff? There isn't a whole lot of still camera stuff, no. But everybody's nowadays seems like they're using the 5D for video. That's correct. I just, I just saw that... Uh, a little bit of Black Swan. The movie Black yes. Swan was shot on the 5D. Right. The subway scenes and... Oh, they looked scenes. great. Yeah. They were gritty. Um, yeah. yeah. And they've, they've used it in uh, 127 hours. They used the 70 in several scenes in there. Right. Um, so now, you don't just hold up your camera and point it at the... At, uh, at, uh, Actually, on the subway, they were doing it all handheld. Handheld. Yeah. That's crazy. Because they said during the, the you know the several interviews, they've said that they didn't want people to realize they were shooting a movie right. and if they brought the big rig right everybody would have gone giveaway hey. yeah. yeah and they would have been booted i mean that's that's one of the things that a lot of people say about the the new dslrs 
is that they're kind of invisible. People don't necessarily Ask Lisa know. About that. She's <laughs> yeah. getting in trouble. <laughs> I, that is not my experience with it. <laughs> well, they're less visible than a Panavision uh, right. camera. Exactly. Right. Yeah, right. I guess so. And so, you know, if you're out there and you want to shoot a couple of stealth movie scenes, right. people could just go out on the street, do a little bit of acting, and boom, you're done. Now, Red Rock makes some great harnesses and mounts right. and stuff, and you brought somebody from Red Rock along I did. With us. I brought Brian Valente from Red Rock because Hi. they have a new follow focus unit that's pretty cool. Several other things. Hi, Brian. Right. Welcome to Mostly Hi. Photo. Hey, thank you, guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. Were you, the, you must have been the, among the first to make a hand, you know, mounts for these uh, 5D cameras so that you could shoot better video. Yeah, back in 2008, um, we actually saw uh, these cameras coming out and we realized the potential for them, but you know, not everyone wants to have that shaky handheld feel to them. And so we developed a whole line of st uh, stabilizers and rigs and accessories to take that small camera and turn it into something that's a little bit more professional for use. I have to say, when you're shooting 1080p video with a high quality lens, if it's not pretty steady, it, it, can, it can make you pretty sick. Right. <laughs> I, I almost always use a tripod. But I guess sometimes you want that that semi handheld feel. That's the right way to think about it. I mean, we all grew up w watching movies that had uh, sort of a sh what's called a shoulder mount feel, where the large Panavision or something is on your shoulder, and it has a certain look that we've become accustomed to. Right. And that's what a lot of people are trying to emulate to keep that dip, that feel still there. Did you show something at the, in something new for us at NAB? Well, we did. So uh, that's been our heritage. Now, what what I've brought to show you here briefly, the the. The idea of video on a DSLR is absolutely beautiful, but the biggest problem besides stabilization is focus. And so we've, uh, we've been showing this brand new device. I brought just part of it here, but what this allows you to do, it's, uh, it is a, um, it's a wireless remote system, and uh, it does a combination of being able to teach you about focus, which we know a lot of times people are not necessarily understand about how aperture works and, and focal length works, but then also to control it as well. And what's really cool is we actually have used a, an iPod Touch or an iPhone as the primary interface inside of So that's of this. slotted into it as an iPod Touch or iPhone? It is. It's actually popped in here. You can uh, open up this um, uh, this uh, piece here and that's actually just cool. pop yours in there. The With app a special is 50 app. Bucks. Yeah. Wow. And then you use Wi-Fi to control the, 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 the focus? Well, we actually use a radio. So Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, you know, we come to know and love that in, in a regular I, iPhone or iPod touch situation. But for professional situations, it's just not quite responsive enough. You know, when you right. move this handle, you got to know that that focus is moving absolutely uh, simultaneously with that. Right. What's the price point on that? <laughs> on that baby. Well, as I mentioned, the, the app is 50 bucks. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the highest end that we have is going to be about $4,000, which includes the motor, the remote system. Uh, we actually have, as part of this, a sonar-based rangefinder, which you put on top of your camera. You point it at your subject. It will tell you on the iPhone with a little icon how far that distance is. And we, we what we try to do is to make it simple for people. So you line up the two... Uh, uh, points on this, uh, and it will actually know that you're in focus. Now you're in focus. It's not visual. You're not doing it by eye. You're doing it much more precisely. Exactly. I think about it like as a video game. Now, the last piece, <laughs> you know, because depth, depth of field, people don't quite really understand the relationship. This little blue piece right here actually tells you uh, the available depth of field, and I'm trying to show it here. Yeah, we can get that on camera. So it'll show you the available depth of field. Um, and so you oh, know just slick. lining those two up you can actually know that you are within the critical area of focus. So it's kind of like a teaching tool first, yeah. and then a controlling of the focus tool number two. You know, it's funny, Lisa, when we were playing with that Polaroid SX-70 yeah. camera, that's what it used, a sonar rangefinder on that thing. It's very accurate. Amazing. It bounces the sound off and bounces and gets it back. It's more precise than your eye is. Absolutely, and that's the real trick. I mean, the, the beauty of uh, shooting video on digital SLRs is you have that shallow depth of field, that what right. people call that you film want look. It. You absolutely want it, but what people find is it's it's nearly impossible to control yeah. unless you understand it first. Well, especially if you're racking focus. If, if you're changing focus as you're shooting, that's very difficult. Can that help you with that as well? Absolutely. So, in fact, one of the features um, is you can actually, you know, usually what when you shoot a movie, you'll say, I'm going to start at A, the actor starts at the A point, and they're going to move to a B. They're going to walk across the room or going to stand up or something. So what we can do is focus on the A point here, and then I'm going to press this. Oh, look at and this. You can see I can do a dot there. I'm going to go to oh, B. Oh, that is a lot of focus pullers out of work now. Wow. Well, <laughs> no. What happened to the string? <laughs> um, a, really, a really good focus puller will always have a job, but it's the, the challenge is how do you translate 
that level of skill that takes literally a decade or more oh, yeah. uh, to learn, and in something that we can just give it to them in, a, in an interface that they understand and they can that's intuitively right. kind of. I mean, right now I'm sure that you guys, it looks like you understand how this works. That's the that's the idea behind this. Right. Wow, that's cool. Cool. Oh, it's cool. It. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that uh, by. Thank you. My pleasure. You have some other Red Rock devices. We're going to show. This is from Mix, Mitch's uh, camera bag. Well, the the last these two items that I have here are are still things that. I don't own yet, uh, but they... Oh, the they you hope to mi migrate them to your camera <laughs> right, bag. Right, right. The first one is the, the new Zacuto um, an electronic viewfinder. Wow. Okay. Now, many people have seen the, the Zacuto Z Finder, they call it, is, is for helping with focusing on the monitor on the back of the LCD of the camera. So it's looking at the LCD. Correct. When you're in live view, right, and using that, now why would you? Why can't you just look at the LCD? Well, the LCD itself is a little small, three-inch monitor. This makes it bigger, right? Um, the Z Finder by itself makes the view bigger. It's a magnification factor. You okay. can get it in two or two and a half or three, depending upon what your preference is. Um, it gets it close to your eye. If you're if you're actually you know, have it mounted to your camera, you've got another point of stabilization. Because it's you know. right against your head. Right. So, yeah. so it's not only how you're holding it, like if you have a two-point rig or a right. three-point rig, you got another point of stabilization. Well, this is why camcorders, so. I mean, the big cameras have this kind of a viewfinder on Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. Now, so this thing that they've announced um, recently is actually has the Z, this, this part here is the Z finder, and then this flips up, and what you have on the inside is monitor. Oh, that's great. Now, there are a couple of these that are out on the market. Uh, this is the Zacuto uh, Small HD announced one. Uh, there's a Cineroid unit. The, so there, several people are making similar items to this. Um, I thought I turned it on. It, it's obviously not connected to the camera. <laughs> but this, this connects to your 5D or your 7D or Via whatever. Via the USB uh, right. connector there? Okay. Well, this is the HDMI. Oh, HDMI. Right. Okay. So this goes into the HDMI output. And that's so where you're getting the video from. Instead of from the live view, you're correct. getting it through HDMI. Right. Now, the problem with the Canons, for example, if you, if you use something like this, because this is, a, I mean, this one is designed, I mean, this part is one piece that you can buy separately, or you get the whole kit together. Right. So this is an external monitor, but you have, you plug this in, and the LCD on the back of the camera goes away. Right. So you lose that functionality. But right. this way, um, I don't have my camera out, but you know you can put this and still have your camera to the side. So a lot of people like to have the camera in a straight line on a shoulder right. mount or whatever. So this way you can have the LCD. It's or the so camera. funny. I mean, this is basically turning your 5D into Correct. something that's much more like a ca the kind of camera a pro Correct. would use. You could just use your iPad. <laughs> I bet you somebody will do that. Yeah, the iPad 2 with a camera in it. Well, know. speaking of iPads, look at this thing. Well, <laughs> this is another uh, little kind of fancy product that I uh, got from the CamCaddy guys. Uh, because a lot of people, and I, this is a picture of my wife. Hi, wife. Hi, wife. What's her um, name? Her name is Connie. Hi, Connie. <laughs> She's probably watching. Of course Hi. she is. Um, and the kids. And the kids. <laughs> what are uh, their names? Uh, <laughs> You got 18 kids? No, I just have two. Madison okay. and Victoria. He almost forgot. Madison no. and Victoria. <laughs> yeah. And and but this I don't have the software on here, but this this can mount to any kind of camera rig you've got. And if you want to do a show where you have a teleprompter, you can turn We're going to get a bunch of those Are you? Uh, in the new studio. Sarah Lane's demanding it. So you, you have a little yeah. iPod mount, and the software is like there's, 10 There's bucks. teleprompter software in there. I, I, yeah. yeah, I've awesome. actually used it for a, a commercial that I did, a web commercial I did. We had it on the teleprompter yeah. on the iPad. Yeah. Yeah. It's so much easier. There's, we don't usually, we never use prompters at, at Twit, but there are times <laughs> when you're doing a promo or something where you just need to say something exactly the way it's written. Right. You need a teleprompter. That's a great idea. And that would mount right next to the camera, Right. and you'd scroll through it. It so, is a bit, I have to say it's a little bit, Bulky it and is. ridiculous. It well, is. you don't carry it around. This yeah. is for a tripod use, I think. I guess, but you could well, maybe use it as as a tripod to take pictures with your iPad. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, you, you have to turn it around backwards. There you so. go. <laughs> FaceTime. Um, yeah. Mitch Ogden is here, and uh, we're going to go into your camera bag. Is that just a little camera bit. bag time? Or it not? will be in a moment. Oh. So get it ready. All right. He is at planet5d.com, which is a great site for enthusiasts, and I am going to hang out there from now on. 
because I am an enthusiast. Bless you. Yes. <laughs> Lisa's mad at me because I broke my uh, yeah my, my, my expensive 50 millimeter 1.2 lens. Didn't break it. Just I don't. It's not the lens isn't broken. Just the <laughs> plastic on the f front of it's a little loose. Well, it still worked. So it worked. I got some great shots last you night. You can just bring it in. I'm hoping. I'm, well, I was just thinking some crazy glue. Crazy glue. No. <laughs> Not a good idea. Duct tape and crazy glue. Yeah, we'll why not? Get crazy. Why not? We'll get crazy in a minute with Mitch Ogden and his camera bag. You're watching Mostly Photo, our live uh, edition from NAB. NAB. It's kind of fun. We're at the NAB show. Brought to you, of course, as always, by the great 100% reinvented 2011 Ford Explorer. We were driving around last night. We, we were, fit all of us in it. It was great. Well, uh, poor Lisa and her mom were kind of trudging back to their hotel. <laughs> and we were going by, and we already had... Hilton in there, and I was in there, and Tony was in there, and Liz was in there, and Lisa was in there, and well, that's only five people. We said, "Come on!" And you guys <laughs> hopped in. We had seven people. Everybody was comfortable. We got we had comfortable. We had the jams going, Elton John, but we had some jams going, and it was great. <laughs> I'll tell you, this thing is beautifully designed, and we can now vouch for the seven passengers. Uh, the exterior, beautiful, clean, and modern. We got some great slick pictures of that. Uh, of that uh, hood and the grill. It looks refined and rugged at the same time. And when you get inside the interior, it's just a great place for you and your family. Very comfortable, as many as seven people. Ford's given an incredible amount of attention to detail and craftsmanship inside. Everything you see is just beautiful. You feel like you're in a, a luxury automobile. There's lots of room, too. There's ample seating, cargo space for your passengers. Um, we, were, we had the three rows of seats, but when we needed to bring the gear with the camera gear and so forth, we just fold down the seats you fold down the second and third row you're going to get 80.7 cubic feet of space it's a lot of space lots of room for gear and if you want even more gear you could tow because they've got an optional towing package with a capacity of up to 5,000 pounds <laughs> 5,000 pounds boat camper or trailer that would be a lot of gear it would be a lot of you gear. know i think aren't we going to talk we were talking about sending you out in the explorer and doing a photo like Going to the mountains or something. I would love to do a, a Yosemite. Like a nature and, thing. Yeah. All right, we're going to do that. I think it'll be a lot of fun. You'll love that 3.5 liter V6 engine. 290 horsepower. 255 foot-pound of torque. Did you, were you, no, you weren't in the car when Liz stepped on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, of course, uh, great mileage. 25 miles per gallon on the highway, according to the EPA estimates. It is a gorgeous, wonderful vehicle. The available intelligent four-wheel drive system, fully automatic, instantly delivering power to the wheels with the most traction, so wheel slip is a thing of the past. They've got this terrain management system. I wouldn't get this because I'm driving around Petaluma. We don't much have much terrain. But you get, if you buy the uh, optional terrain management, you've got this turn of a dial, and you just you set it to the terrain you're on. I'm on ruts. I'm on sand. I'm on snow. I'm on gravel. It's pretty amazing. Um, and a hill descent control, maintaining your speed on steep declines. So you really can go off-road with this. And, of course, you'll go off-road in style with the uh, My Ford Touch, the available sync with My Ford Touch. We had that in the, in the car. We, that's, it was sounded so good. You've got the big five, well, no, I think it's seven-inch LCD on the center stack there and two LCDs behind the steering wheel, allowing you to use touch or voice commands to control everything in the vehicle, entertainment, climate, phone, nav. It's, a, it's an eight-inch touch screen. Really sweet. Check it out. The 2011 Ford Explorer, if you're looking for a vehicle, a sweet ride for you and your family. Uh, and find out more about the 100% reinvented Ford Explorer at our Mostly Photo Adventures site, mostlyphotoadventures.com. While you're there, RSVP for our photo walk the 23rd of April, uh, Saturday afternoon, 4 p.m., New York City. At the fifth, We start at the 5th Avenue Apple Store, and Lisa's going to take you around. You, she is really good. If you, ever, if you get a chance to do this, do this, because it's really fun, because <laughs> you go from person to person. You ask, they're having problems. You ask them. You help them. And it was, I think everybody had a blast with you. You're really good for oh, them. You, you hadn't done one when we started doing these. No. My first one was the San Francisco. I think it's just And I'm great. a little bit shy, so, <laughs> so it's difficult well, to handle a big crowd. You're but. getting pretty good at it. <laughs> Isn't that hard to believe that Lisa is shy? I know. <laughs> no, you know what? That's what I, Lisa is a quiet. <laughs> Sweet person. She's not Ms. Showbiz, but that's why we, we love her. And, and, and I tell you, you're so great with people, and they just loved it. They had a wonderful time. So thank you for doing that. It was really fun. And we'll, April 23rd, we'll see you at uh, the next photo walk. Make sure you RSVP so we know how many to expect at MostlyPhotoAdventures.com. We actually gathered a few extra people as we wandered we around. Because Tony had a sign that said, Twit, and he's wandering. <laughs> and people were joining us. 
By the end, it was like this big crowd. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> it was really fun. <laughs> Mitch Ogden is here. He is with uh, Planet5D.com. He is Planet5D. I am. You're not with it. You are. I am. i totally encompassing it, and in fact, <laughs> I am my own planet. You know, this it's actually a neat story, and I hope you don't mind if I mention it, but... Uh, uh, well, how how many? How, a year ago? Two years ago? I was laid off April twenty third of last year. We so have, and right the reason I mention that is most of the people watching the show right now aren't working, right? <laughs> and they're probably, or, or they're watching from the office. Actually, it's about half and half. <laughs> One guy said I had to close the chat real quickly. The boss came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but there are people in the in, in in here who you know are laid off. We're in tough economic times, and I think this is a great story. Well, I I was really very blessed to be in the right place at the right time with the right product, I think. Um, I started Planet 5D right after the 5D Mark II was announced. And if I can tell a little quick story, I had read an article by Arn, and I can't remember his last name, who runs MacRumors.com. Oh, yeah. He wrote an article in the summer of 2008. And it's a really nice article. He talks about how MacRumors had grown and towards the bottom, he said, well, Mac Rumors has become so big, it allowed me to yes. leave my day job. That's right. And at the bottom of the article, he said, and by the way, my day job was that I was a practicing physician, I had my own practice, and I was earning so much more money than I was doing Mac Rumors that I closed my practice. And I was like, holy cow, I want to do that. Saving people's lives, Mac Rumors. <laughs> yeah. No, he's great. Uh, and if we talked to him, we yeah. had him on the Mac Break Weekly, yeah. and he's a great guy. Right. And yeah. So, so I read that article and I was like, that's what I want to do. Yeah. And when Canon announced the 5D Mark II and Vincent LaForge did Reverie. That was an amazing launched, movie that he shot. Everything. Actually, Philip Bloom's right there. Isn't You're he? kidding. Like standing yeah. right there? Yeah, he's right there. <laughs> Is he looking at us? Oh, Should we bring him over? Come on over. Yeah. No, he's. Wow. We're going to have an impromptu in in interview here. <laughs> Can you come over, Philip? But let's finish your story. So. Um, you got inspired. I was inspired by Reverie and, and, I, and having read Arn's article, and I thought if I were ever going to do something that was going to possibly launch me into a new career, I'm going to try it. So I launched Planet 5D. And, and now you have all the camera gear you could ever want. I, I, do you get much time I, to take pictures anymore, though? I, I, I still manage to take some pictures. Okay, I don't really shoot as much video as I need to. Yeah, but, um, yeah. We're starting to do some photo contests or video contests and stuff like that. I've got a couple that I'm going to announce in the next couple of months. So it'll be. Kind so we were curious what's in your bag before we get Philip up here. Uh, what is this sitting in front of you there? All right. Right there. So, I mean, I, I come from a budget kind of photographer. Right. I was still a photographer. Right. I'm still learning to do video. And the guys at CamCaddy showed me this. In last February when I was at this, Philip Bloom's. This could be a Dick walk. D. Bartolo, what the heck is it contest. Right. So, it's a C-stand. It's got so, feet. So let me, let me get my camera out. You need a camera to, to, to tell us what this set. does, yeah. So obviously it would be better without the strap, but your camera goes right in here. Okay. And so, like, it's a very inexpensive steady cam. Oh, you hold it uh, in so your you, hand? You hold and it you like can... this. Your camera's pointing that direction. And it, this is really, really hot with the guys like skateboarders and those right. kind of guys. Because you can get real low to the ground. Right. You can come up. And, it, it, and it's flexible enough that it takes some shock and vibration out of the And it the is video. steadier if you're holding it with an arm extended. Right. Uh, and you're kind of walking heel toe right. with your knees bent. You actually can get a pretty smooth shot right. with something like that. This is 39 bucks. That's awesome. That's so awesome. the guys at Cam Caddy, had, I mean, it used to be 59 and they've lowered the price to 39 so it's, it's, it's a bargain now. But you can also, there's this uh, mount here. There's a bar that you if you start really getting crazy with wanting to put on accessories like the microphones and that kind of stuff, then, you know, you can add those to it. But it, I wanted to show this because we tend to talk about the really expensive doesn't rack mounts and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but you can go. Right. You need probably a strong arm though for that. It does get heavy if you're <laughs> if you're holding it out, but um, you know the skateboarders they're all young they don't care. So. <laughs> no, I could totally see that. That's so, great. Yeah. So that's a, a great little device for doing stuff like that. What else you got? I got all sorts of stuff now. Um, <laughs> uh, something else that I haven't seen you guys talk about yet is is accessorizing, in terms of maybe you want to mount your camera somewhere. The there's a guy. 
uh, his name is Matt's come out with these nasty clamps. They're called <laughs> nasty a, it's clamps. It's just a regular clamp. <laughs> it's a clamp with, with a what, neck on like it. Like a gorilla pod right. arm and I, on it. And I accidentally left the, the top thing at home. <laughs> but I see what but, I, I so, see where you're going. So here. that mounts to a camera. Yeah, and you clip and it onto a surface. It's very tight. Yeah. Wow. Now you can also mount lights, um, other kinds of accessories like a hot shoe mount or you know. Any That'd be kind great of for a flash. So so yeah, you want to put it somewhere. You know, right. you need it up out of the right. way. You got rigging around or a wall or you know, I put them on my. De I do I do a lot of little uh, podcasts about equipment. So I put my 5D Mark II mounted to my desk. And I don't, you know, I also have a Gorilla Pod. Gorilla Pods work for that as well. So it's just a quick and easy, inexpensive tool that you can use. And it's called a nasty clamp. It's nasty. <laughs> what, what could be wrong with that? <laughs> um, so I've got a Rode microphone. For I got one of those. Audio. Yeah. It just goes in the hot shoe. Anything, yeah, anything would be better than, uh, than the mic that's built the, into the 5D. Correct. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's all sorts of options. We could do a whole show on audio options, as Philip will tell you later. <laughs> Um, I also have, this is a similar thing to the Zacuto EVF that it's we saw. It's an eyepiece, but it clips onto the right. uh, LCD. So it go, the thing that I like about this one, and there are quite a few of these on the market. Um, they're all in the three, $400 price range. But this one is, it snaps in and out very quickly. I, I tend to take stills and video still. I don't do just video. And, and with some of the other devices, you have to unscrew something in order to get them off. I like this because it just snaps right in That's and off. That's awesome. All right, one more because I want to get Philip on here I before know. we have to run. <laughs> we could go on and on. I love this. You're going to have to come back, Mitch. This is great. White balance card. I carry that around with me too. But you know, nowadays card. with Lightroom, you know, you mm -hmm. can get a white balance uh, from one shot and set it all for everything. And I, I used to take pictures of the grayscale everywhere I went, and I don't do that anymore. You yeah. don't really need to. Do it in post. Mitch Ogden. So nice to meet you. Planet Mitch on Planet5D.com. It's great to be here. And, and you and Lisa spotted this guy over uh, over my shoulder. I, I kind of invited him. Philip Bloom. <laughs> now he's got a rig. What has he got? Now, is this Red Rock, Philip? First, first of all, Philip, welcome. Hello, nice to see you. Nice uh, to see yeah, you. No, just, uh, you were tweeting or texting me whilst doing live. I, I saw her That's doing so that. That's so unprofessional. <laughs> right. Terrible. And it's not called a, a nasty clamp. It's called a nasty clamp. Nasty. 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 It's not nasty so clamp. nasty if you're saying nasty. Those nasty clamps are lovely. <laughs> nasty. <laughs> nasty the better. So tell us, who, tell us who Philip is while, while, before, while we, before um, we get a look at it. Introduce yourself. He's so amazing. Uh, I'm Philip Bloom. I'm from London. And I am a cinematographer and a director. But you... I, but you I, move I, to the. Uh, I, I, I shoot a lot on DSLRs and I blog a lot about DSLRs. Um, most recently, I shot a movie with George Lucas using DSLRs. Really? A Second World War action movie. A whole a feature length film. I, well, second unit is feature length film. Well, second unit using the Canon DSLRs. So second unit is the unit that's out there getting background footage, extra background stuff. Background footage, and I also shot on the first unit as camera C using. Is these it difficult cameras. to match this footage that you get with this with the footage the first unit shooting? No, they've done a marvelous job. So there are ways to do that color correction and that kind of thing. You've got the best people in the business, yeah. and they have the best people in the business, yeah. absolutely. And sometimes they want the second unit to look different. Uh, Saving Private yeah. Ryan's a good example where they wanted it gritty and kind of desaturated. Yeah, I mean that was all. All of it was like that. But um, yeah. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I shot because it's uh, cockpits and things like that. They wanted these cameras because they're small. Uh, Whereas yeah, the main yeah. cameras, cameras A and B, are right. F35s, which are the size of right. large boats. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this so, is not a boat. No, and this is uh, this has got a uh, the new Zacuto electronic viewfinder on. We were talking about frame, that earlier, which yeah. is very very nice. So is it HDMI out? Yeah, unfortunately, of the you still have to use the HDMI. There's no way of getting past that. Yeah. The cool thing about this is now we can finally get focus and exposure correctly with these cameras, which has always been a difficult thing apart from using a monitor. Is it because you're seeing a larger image? Well, it's not that, because you can put, you could put the, the, on the, the viewfinder on the, on the back, LCD. but the viewfinder gives you no assistance with the right. exposure, and it gives you no assistance with the focus. Right. This has something called peaking, which we're used to on every viewfinder I've ever used in my life, apart from recently. Uh, so it enhances the edges, so you know when you've got something in focus. And it also has something called zebras. You would call them zebras, but that would be incorrect. <laughs> and they're called zebras, and you can set them to a different percentage to, to get your exposure right. right. And so they'll flutter if you're overexposed or underexposed. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, if you set it, say, 95%, then you just want it to, on the highlights just to disappear. Just, just, yeah, so and it, it also means you can, uh, you can also do um, 
one to one on it so during recording, which means you can then punch in and check your focus if you're not quite sure. Wow. And also has a, an HDMI pass through, which means you can send the, the signal to your director. So you can monitor it and attack. So they can also, not just you looking at the screen, you can give them an image. Isn't Which is always great. useful. Makes Definitely. me want to make a movie. <laughs> I love well, it. you don't need this to make a movie. You just need you, that camera. I'm interested that you're using the same road that uh, Mitch right. and Lisa were using. Yeah, this is good. Uh, but what I've done is I've used the Rycoat InVision shock mount, which is a better. That's very It's cool. much better because it's using the same material that they use for those glasses that you can bend. Yeah. So it's bendable and flexible. And, and it so it absorbs in. a little bit of the vibration. You don't in. hear any thunder. It sits in perfectly. It's yeah. much, much better. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, I notice you don't use a hand grip of any kind. You're, you're holding? Not only because I'm walking around and there's okay. too much to carry around with me. I, I have a minimal rig, and I'm actually shooting almost sort of Hasselblad style. I'm you shooting, at your waist? I'm almost. shooting, yeah, I'm shooting so down here. And I, I can turn this up, and I'm, yeah, I mean, it, it's not very flashing for anybody because I'm always looking up in their noses. Right. But at least it's very steady, and I don't have to have a rig with me. Right. I had a rig with me yesterday, and it exhausted me, so I've decided not to bring my rig with me today and just go minimal. So look at real cinematographers are using this. Uh, right. here all the time. It's pretty neat. Philip, I'm so glad you could come by. I'm glad yeah. you were tweeting him. <laughs> PhilipBloom.net, is that correct? It is, yes. If people want to know more about Absolutely. your work. Yeah, he has great. amazing seminars and if you want to, do you have any more workshops coming up? Uh, not in this country. The next one's in Brussels. If you can make Brussels and then <laughs> I, I, Canada. I'm coming, to, I'm coming to Toronto in uh, mid-June for ProFusion. It's a big event there. So I'm doing uh, two day-long workshops there. It's a great pleasure to meet you. Thank you for coming You're by. Welcome. Thank you, too, to uh, Mitch Ogden. Thank oh, you. We've had such a fun show. This has been I great. Know, we should come to the NAB back. every week, don't you think? <laughs> uh, to Lisa Bentning, don't forget our photo walk is coming up in New York City on the 23rd, 4 p.m. in front of the Apple Store. Come by. But do, if you will, uh, RSVP so we know you're there at MostlyPhotoAdventures.com. And don't forget we are uh, doing our first Mostly Photo Adventures Awards. Uh, join the Mostly Photo Group on Flickr. Upload your pictures, the best pictures We'll, we'll, we'll have two picks. One, a People's Choice Award, where you on Twitter will be allowed to vote for your favorite picture. We'll you, give you all those uh, details next week. And then the Judges Panel Award. And uh, we'll pick, and each of you get a $100 uh, Amazon gift certificate for your trouble. Thank you so much, Lisa <laughs> Bettany. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you. you all for visiting. We'll see you next time on Mostly Photo.